This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Okay, we're back. We're live. It's uh, Trump week. It's a reunion of the three of us, Tim Apicella and uh, Cynthia Sinclair and me. And uh, it's 11, uh, the 11 o'clock block on a given Friday, our favorite time. And um, I was having a conversation with one of our other guests a minute ago, and I want to bring that to your attention, you guys. We have a lot of ground to cover. We haven't been right. together as a threesome in a long time. You know, you got all these great guys on CNN and uh, MSNBC and all that telling us it's like getting a, an information transfusion, uh, right. you know, like every, every weekday. Anyway. And, <clears throat> you know, and, and what happens is uh, they, they dwell and they repeat, I have to say, they repeat the news over and over again, and they put the headlines down on the little lower third thing, and right. they don't have enough time, nor does their format allow for them to really cover everything that's going on. So what we are getting is the raw meat, which is, you know, worth knowing about, of course, but we're not getting the implications. We're not really connecting the dots, and one of our objectives right. on this show is to connect the dots. Right. And I, I wanted your comments about that. I mean, A, am I right? Is he right, this fellow I talked to? And B, what can be done about it? We're actually having a show with the School of Journalism uh, next Tuesday about this very subject. Um, so the question is, is, is the press missing out here? Is the press able in this time? Are we able to absorb all the information we need to know about um, to follow the Michigas, that means craziness, in this administration? Thoughts? Yeah, um, I have one. And the fact is that the media does follow the bright, shiny object that Donald Trump waves in front of the media right and it you that's know that's manipulation and that, that's what we've i talked about too, yeah we've talked about previous shows that there's a distraction on the distraction and of course what is the major thing he's trying to distract from we all know it's the Mueller investigation right so but his distractions are far and many so the media can only cover so many of these and then to properly analyze and connect the dots is something that really isn't quite getting done but you can't cover all this stuff. Um, you just can't. If you, had, if you had your druthers, much, right? you know, if we here at ThinkTech would create a format that would cover this and try to do better, what would you do? How would you handle that? Not easy, eh? No, not easy at all. Yeah. You have to go from so many different sources, I think, is the only way to do it. So when I'm trying to, you know, research one of the stories they're putting out there and see is there really any credibility to this, um, I just go to the Washington Post, the New York Times, I go to all the, you know, main newspapers and, and they're a little different and they put a different spin on things well, maybe, than just watching the news on TV. Maybe you divide it up to kind of the way we like to do on ThinkTech and you say for X minutes we're going to cover the, the shiny objects, for Y minutes we're going to cover the implications of that, for next, uh, you know, the public reaction uh, on both sides of the aisle. And so forth, and just divide it up as a disciplined matter. Yeah. I think that's what PBS think, does. They'll yeah. they'll they'll dedicate fifteen minutes to one news story. Yeah, and then they'll hit some of the you know yeah. the other less important, well, equally important, but less the publicized news stories of the day. Yeah, well, however, however we do it, however anyone does it, um, I think we can't be distracted, as you said, by the shiny object. Right. We can't be manipulated by him because that's what he does. And he, I mean, it's, it's really all the work of a dictator, really. But after two years, I it think is. they're catching on. I think the readers are catching on, the yeah. viewers are catching on, yeah. and certainly the, those journalists that are covering the media, they're recognizing an obvious shiny object, and they're calling it out. Yeah. As a shiny object. As a shiny object. Yeah. And Nancy Pelosi's catching on, too. Well, but, I think it, it all changed, too, with this shutdown. I think there was a real big, you know, paradigm shift in people's thinking well, you're, about you're how using he's the past tense, Cynthia. Well, we we may have one in two weeks' time, actually two weeks from today, I think. Um, it's coming fast, and and yesterday right. yesterday he uh, disabused himself of the of the Joint uh, Appropriations Committee, and said, I don't care what you do if you're not going to put a, a wall in, I'm not going to listen to any of it. This is a horrendous statement. It is. And we're going to be back to where we were. Or are you going to try this national emergency gambit? Well, now, see, that's the thing that scares me the very most. Because, you know, the National Emergency Act was um, put into effect in, what, 1978, I think it was. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it's not very specific. And it gives broad scoping power to, to the president and completely negates Congress, it gives like 120 some odd laws that he is in control of. That's a lot of it's going to be different programs and things. In the Supreme Court. It's in, 
And I, well, now and then, look, that was my next thing, is and now look what the Supreme Court is. But that's is. what he wants. Exactly, that's what he wants, because I mean, his did, Supreme Court will probably support him. They're all in favor no, of... No, not even that. I don't believe it's even that. If you look at this chess game, remember two weeks ago, last week, three weeks ago, I said he really doesn't want to resolve the wall issue because right. that's where he gets his support. That's the emotional issue that Donald Trump... Right was elected on, one of the reasons, and that's right. where he gins up his support. Right. And he knows he can gin him up. So why would I want to solve that? So he doesn't want to solve it, but what he's going to do, in my opinion, and my, my theory is that he's going to pull a national emergency. It's going to go immediately to the court. It's going to get tied up. He's going to step back and go, see, I'm trying to protect America, but here's the Ninth Circuit once again, trying to get in the way of me protecting America and all Americans. And he's going to go on and on and on how he was to his base and those that follow on top of the base, um, how he was the right. defender of safety and keeping those people out of the country. And so he's, we're playing right into this chess game of his. I agree. It's gruesome. And the fellow I talked to earlier, which had a very good point on this, is that if, if you had uh, Vladimir Putin running for a president in 2016 uh, and he had won, in this country, the, the difference in policy would be uh, minimal um, because what, what's happening is Trump is doing everything that Putin would do. He, or that he he's already creating done. Creating disturbances and disruptions, right? Uh, bringing people apart, making, uh, making every, all the groups hate each other, right? Uh, wrecking NATO, uh, confusing people on the fact, disinformation. Getting That's rid of all of invasion. our allies, yeah. or making them angry anyway, so they don't want anything to do with us anymore. Yeah. Well, let's, all of those things, so, uh, separating uh, us, isolating our intelligence us. intelligence agencies. I mean, yeah, that's God. the biggest one, I Let's think. dwell on that for a minute. Uh, he said he didn't agree with the intelligence agencies, that it was fake news. It was just yesterday the day before. And um, so the question I put to you, you're going to love this question, <laughs> is what is he basing that on? Does he yeah. have other intelligence agencies that he listens to? Does he have some advisors there? I don't know who they are in the White House that tell him um, about intelligence matters that are that those that they're more credible than all the intelligence agencies no, speaking together. No, I don't think so. Or has he got a pipeline, a stovepipe, as Rachel Maddow says, a stovepipe to Moscow to Putin? Right. I mean, where is he getting the information on which he can deny the conclusions of all of our intelligence agencies? I I believe that once Donald Trump has something in his brain. And it doesn't matter yeah. if it's five years ago, 10 years ago, two decades ago, it never changes. Mm -hmm. It's stuck. That's called ignorance. Ignorance, yes, by choice. <laughs> yeah, so what, what are the implications of that? If you don't listen to your intelligence agencies and you hear another drummer, another drummer somewhere else, maybe far away. Well, you've um, compromised every single one of our FBI agents that's out there in the field. You undermine their credibility here. Yeah. I hope people don't believe in them anymore. All of those things. So and the relations between those agencies and agencies that they collaborate with yeah. in other countries. Right, Which exactly. is part of intelligence now. Yes. I think our standard allies, our strongest allies, will recognize that Donald Trump is not the go-to person for credibility reports. They are, they'll know our agencies and the work they've done and the dedicated professionals that do that work. And so when those, those individuals are interacting with other, you know, other agencies, be it in Britain or France or wherever, they're going to know that what we say at, you know, behind closed doors will be credible. I don't think he's going to compromise um, those strong allies we have. Maybe the, less, you know, the lesser uh, close allies that we have, maybe they will be suspect of anything that's said from us from here on in. I don't know. Well, you know, there's, there's this thing about um, third-party observers. Uh, yes, uh, they laughed at him at the UN when he made a stupid statement. He oh, said, I've oh. done a better job than any president that the we've ever had. The best one ever, yeah. Uh, really, I would have thought he made he was the worst president, but that's just me. Uh, <laughs> um, but then, you know, you have, so, so they laugh at him. But at the same time, and I, I, I have to wrestle with this, at the same time, we elected him. We, yeah. the country. We, the process. We, the great democracy. The great hope of the 20th and the 21st century. We, the ones who set the world order after right. World War II. We elected this guy. We have to be judged by the person we elected. So while they laugh, we also lose credibility as a world leader. And it's very sad because our destiny is linked, however you put it, 
through him. And so the question, and this is a good segue actually, the question is uh, when, when you say that they're laughing at him and they don't treat him as the real deal, everyone in that, in that analysis is assuming that he's gone soon enough in 2020. They do assume uh, that, I think. My hope and my prayer is that he's impeached long before then, but, yes. um, but <laughs> that he's gone in any event by 2020. And uh, the question I put to you is uh, how likely is it that he will be gone? Uh, is that a foregone conclusion? He will oh, be gone? How do you feel about that? Not at all. Yeah. This will be a tough, hard slog. It, it is not a gimme. It is not a no-brainer. Um, the Democrats are going to be on, have to be on their best game to actually put up enough quality candidates to be the nominee for the Democratic Party to actually take him on. What so do you, you don't think there'll be any Republicans taking him on? I hope so. I hope. I think Jeff Blake. Jeff Blake, hope, Blake has I definitely hope, been getting himself ready. I hope for that John spot. Kasich comes to the table. There you go. Of Ohio. What about the young mm. upstarts? I think this is um, an introduction to future campaigns. I think hey. this is a way to get name recognition for the 20, you know, 2024, 2028, um, you know, presidential campaigns. I think it's a great way to get your name out there and and have, you know, I, I don't... But not to win. Not to win, no. I think, you know what, to go back a little bit about what you were saying, um, how it reflects on the whole country, and it does. But I, I also think that the more evidence that comes out about Russians' involvement in, you know, stealing our election, basically, um, I think that people are starting to realize, well, maybe it's not all of America that is behind this guy, right? And then they can also look at the fact that maybe... The Americans that did vote for him were not actually looking at him. They were sort of under this false pretense that had been shoved down their throats through that big disinformation campaign well, that was, was a, going on. Donald Trump is president of the United States largely because it was a protest vote. A protest vote because the establishment wasn't getting anything done. A protest vote that the, the government, whether it be Bush, uh, Bush administration or a Clinton administration, was ignoring a large part of this country called the flyover states, the Midwest. Right. The plight of those people who are barely making it, who have been displaced either through unemployment or just ignored. So right. they came out in this 2006, you know, they came out during the election. Because he said, I will help you. Yes. And he, he appealed well, as part of his whole campaign. He still appeals to, to a lot of people. To appeal and to some that of the things sense, he yeah. Do, he does, you know, maybe there's a method in the madness. I mean, he's, uh, I it just come, come to mind, you know, Afghanistan. He's trying to negotiate a settlement of that. And the, the diplomats tell us that the way he's doing is completely wrong right. because he's cut out the Af Afghanistan government. So at the end of the day, when he, you know, when he makes a deal with the Taliban, um, that's not going to be a deal that binds the Afghanistan government. I mean, right. they'll be back in, uh, in chaos immediately, so there's no benefit there. But he is trying that. Um, what else? Uh, oh, he's, uh, he dropped the uh, non-proliferation nuclear oh. non -prolifer agreement uh, today, right. I guess. Is, is that it a today? distraction? Or? Yes, today. Is, today? Is, that, is that a distraction, Jay? Oh, that's a, that's a, I think, sorry, I'm going to answer. I had an answer to this, too, because I think it's more than just a distraction. I think it is a distraction, but I think it's more than that, too. He's got to say, look, I'm tough on Russia. Remember, I told everybody, I'm tough on Russia. And so he's, and he's catching all this flack for the sanctions with Deripaska and all this stuff, so that now I, I think it's more than just a distraction. I think he's okay. trying to say, look at me, really, I really am tough on Russia. You can't say I like Putin because look what I'm doing. Well, it's very interesting because I'm, uh, does it play to his base? I remember I told you guys about a gun show in the South, uh, and of which there are many, uh, yeah. where the reporter walked around and said, what do you think of Russia? These are people who, you know, thought that communists were filthy pinko a few years ago. That's right. Okay, and now <clears throat> they say, oh, we like Russia, and we should make friends with Russia, and Trump is right. Now Trump is complaining that Russia did not abide by the nuclear nonproliferation agreement. And for that reason, he's pulling out of it. So what do the people of the gun show say now? Trump is right again. He flipped 180. Right. Uh, now right. he's right still. Whatever well, he does is right. Is right. Basically. Just remember, though, the NRA represents a lot of these people. And now there's, you know, there's news reports about NRA and their connection of, you know, um, this Russian... Putina. Putina, thank you. Yes. I couldn't remember her name. <laughs> I can't remember her um, first name. So, but, yeah. you know, the NRA now is kind of scurrying behind closed doors or under the right, couch right. or under the chair going, oh, no, 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 no. 30 million to and his campaign. And they are losing a lot of revenue right now. They're losing a lot of revenue. 
people aren't today. supporting them. That's correct. Yeah. But meanwhile, we haven't seen any legislation that stops it. And we see in the paper, I would say almost every day, if not every day, there's, there's rampant gunfire in various places in the country for any number of reasons. And the message is so clear. There are too many damn yeah, guns. And I think that's right. a, and it's not a big reason why they're losing the revenue. This is going to, I can't support this financially anymore. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, they're having their first, Congress is having their first, uh, uh, what do you call it, a meeting, a session? It's not really called a meeting, though, right? Where that uh, committee is going to come together and talk about gun violence. There's never been one. Yeah. In all this time, there hasn't been one since Sandy Hook. And they, they listed, I can't even remember how many um, mass shootings. There must have been 15 of them that they put on the screen and this is now the very first one they're going to have. In well, so when we get house. back from this break, I would like to talk to you, something you mentioned a little while ago, Tim, about whether the Republicans are showing, showing fractures here. Mm -hmm. Because uh, what they have been doing is a violation of the, of the law and spirit of the Constitution. Right. And query, are they going to be able to, uh, you know, get back to, get back to the right approach? We'll be right back after this break. You're going to see. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go Beyond the Lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just going to scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m. on Friday afternoons. And then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up. And please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. Yeah, notwithstanding the bright, you know, the bright, shiny objects that we see on, on, on weekday television, um, but it's all the secondary things that we don't see. I mean, pulling the wings out of the uh, EPA, pulling the wings out of social programs, really horrendous things, Absolutely. you know, uh, sort of stopping. And, you know, your point about, uh, about having another, uh, another shutdown, I mean, he doesn't want government. He wants to be... Yeah. Him running everything, every, making you know, making pronouncements on tariffs and everything else without process, without Congress. He's marginalizing Congress. Right. And this is not what the, the founders uh, intended at all. It's supposed no. to have checks and balances, and so he's neutralized, or arguably, we'll see what happens to the Supreme Court. He's ne completely neutralized Congress. Right. Because really, those guys shouldn't be able to sleep at night. The Republicans. I don't know how and, they do. And the, and the Constitution <laughs> is in, in in a state of crisis. Right. Uh, and so the, the, the hope, you know, I mean, I don't know if we can be optimistic about it, but the hope is that, is that the Republicans will see the error of their ways, that McConnell will see the horrendous error of his ways, and there will be fissures and fractures and cracks among them where they realize that it's not all about following McConnell and Trump, that they actually have a duty to the country. Um, so what are your thoughts about that? Are we seeing... We're this? seeing evidence already. Let's talk about okay, it. Okay, let's talk about that evidence. And that is, remember, the last shutdown, Mitch McConnell would not let a, a bill to reopen on the Senate floor. Right. Well, the Senate is right now already looking at bills to pass that's going to address the wall and the funding of the wall and to avoid a government shutdown. Mm -hmm. So I agree. I'm very concerned on Mitch McConnell's previous statements that he's not putting anything on the floor until President... Trump says it's okay to do so, and he did abdicate his responsibility, not right. only to the Constitution, but to the oath to the Constitution right. that he took. But I think I'm starting to see cracks in that veneer, yeah. and I think you're going to see the House and the Senate pass bills, and I think they are going to go to the President's desk, and we may be in an override of a veto. Right. So we, yeah. we'll see. Well, I, don't they think, I, don't think the, I don't think the Republicans need to see one more um, story after story after story of the plight of federal workers and the fact that they can't right. pay anything of their bills. And I just don't think they need that. And particularly with those Republican senators that are coming up for re-election in 2020. Right. I think so, too. I agree with you. You think that, uh, this is a silly question, we're going to ask it anyway. <laughs> you think that um, uh, Nancy Pelosi should 
give him part of the wall? Well, he, you know, he claims all the time that they're already building the wall for the last three days. That's what he's been saying. Mm -hmm. We're already doing it. He wants five point six, what, seven billion no, dollars? No, she's for the not going to. No. Well, the question I don't is, think should she? Come and I think, I think the answer is, you know, you you. you you don't want to appear like Donald Trump that you've painted yourself in a corner. Who looks like the, the statesman here? Nancy right. Pelosi. So if you're going to look like a statesman and a negotiator and you can make great deals, which Donald Trump obviously is not making, um, sh throw him a bone. That's what I was thinking. Throw him Give a bone. him some. Give throw him, him a some. Bone. And say, we'll do a Ballard wall, but we're not doing a brick wall. You know? And since Donald Trump is going back, He's retracting onto what a, what a wall is defined it's a barrier as. now. Call it whatever you want. Call it. What well, no, he's going back to it's a wall. It's page, a wall. Call it pages if you want. That's what he's yeah. You know, and, and oh, right. actually, a wall in some cases does make sense. But particularly in big cities where if there is, you know, a crossover, you can't, if you're not there to, to, you know, see them come across the border, they integrate into the city very quickly. So in some cases, a barrier may make sense for immigration control. Mm. Mm. May. I said may make well, sense. And the whole thing is, is that the Democrats have been saying, I mean, there's been money that's been allocated to walls. They've talked about it in the past. They've already but, funded it. Yeah, before, long before Trump ever came around. Is so it, it's it, not it's like they're wall, against it completely. Is it really a functioning, um, uh, you know, structure? Or is it just a symbolic thing about uh, him and his, um, you know, narcissism, him and winning? Him showing his uh, his base. Of that course, it is. Maybe a combination lost. of the two. So, because it doesn't seem to have evidence-based value. So right. Of course, it is. Um, it's exactly that. So my my problem with it, I'll tell you, is that if you you know, it, it, as in people with pathological problems, if you give them an inch, they will take a mile. Mm -hmm. Right. And if you give him, you know, one farthing, uh, she must see it the same way. She if does. you give him one farthing for this wall. Um, he'll he'll be back. He'll want something right. else next time. Right. Next time he can uh, shut the government down. Next time he wants to stamp his feet, he'll be back on this. But I think the other part of it is you have 800,000 people out of work. Exactly. You have the government not functioning. You're losing billions in terms of the gross national product and all that. Meanwhile, he's pulling the wings out of the EPA. Right. He's pulling right. the wings out of social programs and medicine. He's, he, he's doing right. terrible, terrible, awful things to immigrants terrible things, and he's capitulating to Putin every time he gets a chance. Right. So, and he's trying to shut down Mueller. I mean, all of these horrendous negative things. And, you know, query, how important is the wall? I suggest to you the wall is a shiny object. Yes. Well, I said, yes. It was a mnemonic, it was, right? right, for him to remember to talk about immigration during the, that's right. during the campaign. So it wasn't even it's like a real a thing he had to write it on his hand, But he didn't have to write it on his hand, but... <laughs> But exactly. he needed, he did, he did a, 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 something to remember what he needed to talk about immigration. Right. Yeah. And that's how it started. That's how that's, it started. And so, you know, it, maybe it has something to do with the fact that, yes, and people are upset about immigration. Democrats alike want to reform, have, you know, immigration reform. We do need to get tougher on our southern border, and everyone agrees about that. So, you know, it was one of the things that I'm sure his campaign people said, do this because this is the number one thing that people well, are thinking about. And that was the first thing he said off the escalator right. in his campaign. That's the first thing he came out with. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, the amount of damage that he is doing, has done, and is doing daily as we speak to this country and its position in the world is incalculable. Um, his remark this week uh, about Gia. Um, what are you guys talking about? Global warming? It's really cold in oh, Chicago. Yes. Oh my gosh! It, 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 it speaks of <laughs> ignorance of a come of a back huge soon dimension. or something like that. He yes. asked. Yeah. Global he, warming. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. He Would has you like no to hear idea. the quote very quickly? Yes, please. please. In the beautiful Midwest, wind chill temperatures are reaching 60 degrees, the coldest ever recorded. In coming days, 60 degrees minus. Yes, minus, minus 60, 60 degrees. Yeah. Yes. Minus. In coming days, expect to get colder. People can't last outside for a few minutes. What the hell is going on with global warming? Please come back fast. We need you. Oh, my gosh. Now, there is an intelligent statement if I've ever heard one. And Australia, he's forgetting about the fact that Australia is having record heat right now. He just doesn't get it. I'm sorry. <laughs> he doesn't get it. But, the, you know, the implications, he's the president. Uh, if he was just running The Apprentice, I wouldn't care. I didn't care when he, when he right. ran The Apprentice. But he's the president. He has 
all this power, right. the power to do things and the power not to do things. And, and you know, the world order, to go back to that point, uh, that was established uh, about what America represents, the Statue of Liberty. Give me your oh, tired, Lord, your huddled masses yearning yes. to breathe free. Oh. oh, gee whiz, it hurts me in my heart to even say that. Right. Because we're so far off that we have forgotten that, we have, have abandoned it in favor of this kind of isolationist nationalism, right. skinhead, white supremacy shit, excuse me. That's okay. Uh, when I was in Washington and I went to the Lincoln Memorial, and I started to read the Gettysburg Address. I couldn't make it through it. All I could think of was how how much Lincoln must just be rolling over in his grave, and that every single thing in the Gettysburg Address, he is just we're, we're done getting, the opposite. We're getting to a, a point in in this administration where logic doesn't win the day, ra rational thinking doesn't win the day. Um, I hate to say it, but religion and appeals to raw base emotions is winning the day, and the Democrats aren't fighting back efficiently on that point. Sarah Sanders, remember, uh, she just recently said to um, CBN, the Christian Broadcast Network, that Donald Trump is God. appointed by God. by God to be President of the United States. The <laughs> quote is, I think God caused all of us to fill roles at different times, and I think that he wanted Donald Trump to become president, and that's why he's here. Oh, my God. So I'm just saying, I know I they're, winning, they're winning some of the 30%, 35%, 40%, not based on policy, not based on rational, based on gut emotional issues. And right. re religion, believe me, is one of them. And that's how they're winning the day. And Democrats have to get smart, look at the chess game, look at the chess moves, and start planning ahead on this. Right. They're not doing it. But you're still talking about stroke for stroke. You're still talking about um, you know the the news every day. Yes. What what about yeah. what about an impeachment, girls? Uh, it's almost time. Yeah. <laughs> did you just Come say on, girls? girls? Did you As call us girls? Wait a minute. That That's would be right. me. You don't look anything like a well, girl. Well, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> well, we're getting closer. I mean, unfortunately, Mueller needs more time. He needs more time for to get this. Fire hose of, of oh, evidence. I was disappointed to find out that Stone was going to get more time before a trial. Right. But I was encouraged to find that it wasn't going to be years. It was going to be maybe six months. Right. right? Uh, because of the, what, complex and... Uh, complex Voluminous, and, yes. And the, you, yeah, the, all the information they got. And I suspect that's a, probably a true statement, that it is complex. Two uh, terabytes. Yeah, there's a lot this of... Is think tech, in this there. is ThinkTech Hawaii. Most people who watch ThinkTech Hawaii have a... A broad-based idea of how much a terabyte is. It's, it's a, a lot. lot of material. It's a lot of material. It's a lot. And I don't think that uh, Mueller is, is kidding when he says he, he wants to look at it. Yeah. Because in there, connect the dots, and you're going to find, A, that Stone was really bad, and B, that he was really connected to, to Trump. Right. Uh, and, and Trump should be concerned about that. And I suppose I would ask you here, we're running out of time, you know, how ideally, optimistically, I mean, if you don't like Trump, um, how is this going to unfold, if, it, if I think, at all? I think the Democrats in the House have all, I mean, the Intelligence Committee, the Ways and Means Committee, we got all kinds of people meeting, and that's what they're meeting about. I mean, Adam Schiff was just on TV last night talking about how they are subpoena all, all the witnesses that came through that they didn't get to really talk about or talk to, they did not get to question them like they wanted to, and then the Republicans wouldn't allow all kinds of stuff to happen, and now it's gonna happen. According to Adam Schiff, it's gonna happen now. So that's one of the things, I think. So it's not just uh, Mueller doing the investigating now, we've got Congress doing some hope so. investigation well, also. Hope so. We need to know that the American public gets access to this information, yes. because if they don't become outraged and engaged, and then start calling their senators, the Republican ones, and saying, do something about this. Um, yeah. It's going to be business as usual. And the word impeachment will not occur. And as you said, it shows a go. You know, there's nothing worse than an impeachment, but a failed, failed impeachment. Failed impeachment. No, and so unless the American public gets engaged, how do they get engaged? The journalists have to bring that information to the American public. Right. Right. They Not do. just the shiny objects. Right. Rachel Maddow is really good about not... Um, just reporting on the shiny objects. And they she have to goes beat in that depth. drum. Yes. We all have to beat that we drum. We all have to beat and, the drum. And we I have agree. to be, uh, you know, analytical and dealing with all the email. I don't know about you guys. I get all this email all day. 
about sign here and give me five dollars there and, all oh, yeah. that, and figure out how we can really help can we, we really here in hawaii how we can really help right. some people in hawaii go to the mainland and participate in campaigns in the mainland yeah. right. some people you know write columns for mainland newspapers who knows what um you know but we all have to the whole country has to and, and maybe the republicans will see the error of their ways maybe we'll have that fracture in, in the Republican Party. I think it's happening, Jay. I, I hope so. I do too. And I think we still but, need to be kind of diplomatic about all of it too, well, as far as you have to remember how we to talk be to smart people. About it because and yes, Trump smart. is going to fight like hell. Oh, yes, he yes, is. He is. He's going to fight in every way. And way. his surrogates every are going to fight like hell. Surrogates and the base and all that. Exactly. So it's a long, it's, it's a long operation um, to impeach him. Yeah. But I think that has to be the mission. I think so too. Yeah, yeah. Okay, want to come back and do this again next week? Sure. Absolutely. All right, I knew you'd say that. I'll bring my quotes and my notes next time. Tim Apicella, <laughs> Cynthia Sinclair, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Trump Week. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Well, so glad we <laughs> Thanks, <do> Jake. <laughs>